everyone, I'm Donna Downey from Donna Downey Studios and I'm going to be showing you all the versatility that the Faber-Castell Design Memory Craft line can do. The first techniques I'm going to be showing you are using the Gelato line from Design Memory Craft. They are in a wide array of colors and I'm going to show you some techniques with water and some techniques without to incorporate into your art projects. One of my favorite techniques to use with gelatos is what I call gelato drippage. It's a way to get the color to run down your page using watercolors and water, and it makes a really great backdrop for whatever you're going to create on top. The entire background of this piece was created with drippage. You can see it from the bottom because when I first started, I started with the canvas this way and dripped the color down. So we're going to go ahead and put the gelatos onto a gessoed page as well as a non-gessoed page so you can see the differences in the outcome. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to coat this regular cardstock with gesso. What this gesso is going to do, it's going to take the absorbency out of the paper and you'll see when we contrast with and without the gesso, the color will roll a lot nicer on the gessoed surface. Okay, now while this page is drying, we'll pull a blank piece of cardstock and do the gelato drippage on a porous, non-gessoed page. The first thing I did is I pulled out the gelatos in one cool colorway. When you're mixing colors, you should really stay within an either warm or cool palette so when they blend together, they don't make mud. Now I'm just going to take the gelato, they look like chapsticks, and you're just going to rub them onto your page just like this. And you can be heavy-handed. The more heavy-handed you are, the more color you're actually transferring. Now you always run the risk when you're using a paper page that's not been gessoed that it might curl. So also know that you might need to give this a little bit of drying time before um, you go ahead and do anything on top of it and maybe even possibly iron it to flatten it down. If you do it in your journal page, it's no problem. Now you can go as crazy and as heavy as you want on this. I'm just going to keep this quite simple. You could actually take your finger and just with the oils in your finger start to blend and you can see that color start to smooth out. But because these are watercolor, adding water makes them nice and dreamy. Now I'm just going to spray water on them. Now the paper is going to want to absorb the color so you have to work a little bit fast and I'm going to start to turn them into a watercolor before I do any dripping. Now if you're using colors that you don't want to blend together, you might need to take your finger, wipe off the color before you go into another new color. But I like it messy. Now wet is going to lead into wet, so because this page is dry, you're going to see the drips run in a straight line. And I'll do an example of both for you. I'm just going to put this towel here so it'll catch all of my drips and you'll just see the color kind of go straight down. You can shake it, you can force it. But because wet leads into wet, if you spritz it with a little bit of water, you'll see the color even move further and further down. Now this would be great for a card background, on a journal page, you can even do it on a canvas, but you just want to make sure this color is going to dry and blend because like you can see right here, it's going to grip. But now, when I show you what's going to happen on the gessoed page, you're going to see all these dreamy colors just run smoothly down the page. As I finish up putting the color on the gessoed one, I want to show you just how smooth these colors will blend in contrast to the non-gessoed surface. So I'm going to take these, spray a little water, and you'll immediately see that the color starts moving on its own, way more painterly than when the surface is porous. I lift this up, you'll see the colors start to run down, spritz some water, and there's none of that 
color being absorbed into the paper. They're just dripping and rolling down the piece. Now, in opposition to that was the first one we did. So when it's porous, you'll see that one drips nice and smooth and makes this painterly effect, and one, the paper's gripping it so much that it won't move. To take this one step further, now that I've got this painted surface nice and wet, I can make some texture in it. I'm adding a little bit more water, and then I'm going to take regular table salt. Now, this is a reaction between the salt and the water. It's not really with the water color, but any water-based product will work for this. So as I take this on, you can see the color starts to grip the salt. Now the larger the crystal of salt you're using, the larger that texture will be. So if you're using, say, kosher salt or even rock salt that you put out in the snow, you'll get this really nice textured kind of, um, the, I like to equate it to the similarity of like a Tuscan cobblestone or something like that in your watercolor. Here you can see an example of a finished piece with the texturizing in the background, just adding to the visual interest of the piece, simply just by using a gessoed surface, sprinkling that salt on while the page is still nice and wet, and you'll leave that nice residue of the salt behind. Now to remove the salt, just wait for the piece to dry, dry 100%, and then just take your hand and slough the salt particles away.